Okay, so you remember these guys from the last video. They were either at a rest or driving at a constant velocity, so constant speed and direction. And they're just pushing on this block that's hanging from a rope. Uh, now we want to draw a free body diagram for this object. And basically free body diagram, you just isolate the object that you want to look at uh, and you kind of free it from its surroundings. That's where the name comes from. So in this situation, we only really have one object of interest. Everything else we can ignore. So aside from the forces, obviously. So if you want to draw the free body diagram, just go up here. And it's good to say free body diagram. First of all, you want to identify uh, some coordinate axis that you'll be using. Just a little one for reference that, you know, that will be X and that will be Y, just for any discrepancies in the future. Uh, now what you do is you draw your, your isolated object. You could draw it as a point if you want, or you could just draw it as this object. And you could even say free body diagram of M. Now, all we do is we draw the four forces on it that are acting on it. Or there could be more, but in this case there's only four. So you would draw, we have W going down, tension in the rope going up, now tension, uh, this is a good time to mention that ropes can only be in tension uh, as a force. Like you can't really compress a rope and get much useful anything out of that. Uh, and so in that case also uh, ropes, the, the force will be directed along the line of the rope. Same thing for cables. Um, so that's pretty much all to say. It's like a kinematic constraint is what we call it, is that that force has to be directed along the line of that cable or that rope. And here we can say that we have force one going this way and we would have force 2 going this way. Now in this case, uh, they're all going through the mass center. That's why we said the sum of moments was equal to 0. If they were, if they were, um, for example, we'll switch colors. If you had something like this, you had a force pushing here and a force pushing here. Yeah, it's not going to drift to the right or the left, but you see it's going to want to spin in that direction. So anyways, that's just kind of a side note. Um, and so this is, uh, this is a free body diagram, and this is actually all you need. Uh, if you wanted to draw it as a point, for example, you could draw it like this. Um, you could draw the arrows going towards the center or out. It's kind of up to you. Whatever makes the most sense. You could say that W is going down, tension's going up, you know, force one is going this way, and force two is going this way. Now this would be a very unintuitive way to draw this problem, but sometimes you'll find that it's easier to draw the arrow going to the mass center, and other times you'll think that it might be easier to draw it going away from the center. So it's kind of personal preference, but it also helps to draw, you know, if F1 is on this side, and then draw F1 on this side of the free body diagram. So anyways, uh, that's that. Uh, let's look at another example. We have a slightly more complicated 2D example right here. We're going to say that this blue stuff, uh, this surface, we're going to say that this is ice, so there's no friction. Okay, because friction will actually be a force that we're going to deal with later. So, but now we have this whole system is in equilibrium. For example, uh, we have block A and block B. They're connected by a cable that's going to go over also a frictionless pulley. And basically the weight of A is going to pull down on the rope and the weight of B is going to pull this way on the rope. And together, they're not going to pull, they're not going to start drifting in either direction. They're just going to stay put. So we're going to need to draw two free body diagrams. Uh, let's draw the free body diagram for A first. So we'll do it over here. So we have free body diagram of A. Um, if you look at this by inspection, we're only going to have two forces acting on this. So we'll have A here. We're going to have the tension and the rope pulling up. Okay, so it's good to call that, if you can, label the rope force as T for tension. And then we're going to have the mass, uh, sorry, the weight pulling down. Weight is going to equal the mass of A times G. And if you look at that, you can totally you can totally make all these assumptions because if this whole thing is in static equilibrium, aka if this is not going this way and this isn't getting pulled up or vice versa, then you know that if you just look at this, if you just isolate this little bit here, that it can't be moving because the rest of it's not moving. So that means that the tension in this fort and this rope has to equal the weight because if it didn't, then A would say maybe go down or up, and then it, in turn that would make the whole system move. So, there we go. That's all we need for free body diagram of A. There's no forces in the X direction, as you can see. There's no one pushing on it, or there's no wind or anything like that that we would have to account for. So now when we want to go do the free body diagram for B. Free body diagram for B. And also, don't forget, it's always a good practice just to label your axes. Free body diagram B. And again. 
We can label our axes just for our own reference or maybe someone who's marking our test so they know what's going on. Um, now for B, we'll try and draw it approximately on an angle like I have it there. Something more or less like that. <laughs> it's not quite exact, but whatever. So we're going to have a few more forces acting on this guy. First of all, we're going to have the rope pulling on it. And also notice that I've drawn these ropes. They're in line with a mass center. That's really important. So we have tension. Now this is going to be the same tension. That's another thing about the kinematic constraint of ropes is the tension will be the same along any point of this rope. And it's always in tension. It's not pushing. It can only pull. So we have that. Also another thing I guess I should specify is this slope is going to be at some angle. Let's call that theta. So which would mean that with respect to the x-axis that this tension is coming off at the same theta. So it's also good to be able to draw any reference angles that you might know. Okay, the next force we're going to have is the weight of this is going to pull straight down. Gravity always wants to pull these guys straight down. So we can draw that coming from the mass center just for our reference. Um, so we will have weight. This will be equal to the mass of block B times G. Okay, uh, what else are we going to have? We're going to need a normal force acting from our ice. It's going to be pushing out perpendicular to the plane that the ice forms. So we can draw that like this, pointing straight like that, and we'll call this force, this normal force, we just label that N. All right, and now because I've said this is ice, we're going to assume that it's frictionless. So there will be no friction acting on B, which if, you know, if it was concrete or wood or something, and we definitely have to account for friction, and that would act along the plane of the, of the slope here. So the last thing we need to do then is just identify what angle N is acting on, and it turns out that this angle is theta. So now we would have enough information that we could actually solve this problem if we were given the mass of block A and B because we know that for both of them or the sum of ooh, the sum of forces in the x direction is zero the sum of forces in the y direction is zero and because of this problem the way I've drawn it everything is acting through the mass centers so we don't need to worry about any torques or moments but if you really want you can say the sum of moments is equal to zero. This holds true for both free body diagrams. If you, uh, if you really want, you can have it over here. You can also, you know, do one for this free body diagram. Put that somewhere in there. Uh, and yeah, but like I said, there is no moments in this problem, so you don't even need to consider these guys. Uh, given the masses, you'll be able to solve these problems.